。各位与会嘉宾，大家早安，欢迎莅临二零二一智慧一。Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 2021 International Smart Medical Forum Crossfield Facilitation Revolution of Smart Healthcare. Today's forum will start in five minutes. Just a gentle reminder, please. Leave your mobile phone in vibration mode or conference mode. Thank you for your cooperation. Ladies and gentlemen, we will start today's meeting in one minute. Welcome to the 2021 International Smart Medical Forum. Please be seated. Get ready. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests online offline, good morning. I would like to extend my gratitude. Thank you for joining today's meeting. And we are very honored to have this meeting hosted by Ministry of Economic Affairs, Foreign, uh, Bureau of Foreign Trade, and also TITRA, Taiwan External Trade. And today's meeting, we focus on the importance, the significance of cross-regional development. And this is a prioritized strategy and policy that worth your time. And also today, we have a sorry list of experts and distinguished guests to discuss today's issue. And now we would like to welcome today's distinguished guest. And if you hear your name read, please stand up and wave your hand. First of all, we would like to welcome Lenore Evan Ling, President and CEO of Taiwan External Trade Development Council. And our next speaker will be David Zhou, founder and CEO of D. Next, I would like to welcome Mr. Danny Chen, CTO and MTC Lead, Microsoft Taiwan. Alan Chang, CEO and co-founder of AT General Mix. And also we have uh, Mr. Xi, Jason Xi, Senior Account Manager, 3M Healthcare Business Group. Thank you for joining us in today's forum. It's a wonderful event, and it's our honor to have you. And today we are very honored to have Mr. Lenore F.M. Lin, President and CEO of Taiwan External Trade Development Council, for opening remark. Let's welcome him. Thank you. Let's welcome her. Thank you very much. David Zhou, founder and CEO, Zip01. Danny Chen, CTO and MTC lead, Microsoft Taiwan. And also Jason Xu, Senior Account Manager, 3M Healthcare Business Group. And also Alan Chang, CEO and co-founder, AT Genomics. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, friends from the media, online and offline. Also, actually, we have two lectures online. They'll be joining us later. First of all, I would like to welcome you joining us in this um, meeting held by Ministry of Economic Affairs, uh, Bureau of Foreign Trade, and also hosted by uh, Taiwan External Trade Development Council. Actually, this is the second day of the forum. And we have a lot of important issues in the forum. And this morning, we will focus on the leading industries and also innovations in these industries. We will focus on how to introduce these new technologies, how to leverage and further develop these technologies. And in the afternoon, we have our investors and also our um, experts in the field who will discuss how to invest and develop the field further. So this will be a very fruitful day. As we all know, in 2020, the world has been challenged by COVID-19. As we are confronted by the two very important issues of the 21st century, climate change and disease outbreaks. In the past year, as we have been fighting COVID-19, it's like a world war. In the process of fighting against viruses, the value of survival and health are more presented. To overcome such challenges in the healthcare industry, we are seeing new issues emerging. How are we going to integrate healthcare, biomedicine, and technology to overcome the challenges of disease outbreaks? And that's the genesis of telemedicine. And we are seeing new medicines, vaccinations, their development are being accelerated, and we are seeing new facets, new arenas of telemedicine, of healthcare in general. 
and it has changed the life of all humanity. And according to research and market, actually in 2021, the global market of telemedicine will grow by 37.1 percent, and by 2027, the market value will reach 508.8 billion U.S. dollars. And by estimate, between 2020 and 2027, the global digital healthcare markets will have a CGR growth rate of 18.8 percent. So this is really an immense opportunity. Speaking about AI, 5G, IoT, these digital technologies serve as locomotives of the new variety, the diversity of healthcare products, innovative services. And in today's forum, as we observe the presentations and also the background of the uh, lectures, um, we can learn a lot from them. For example, 3M, um, our distinguished guest will talk about the wearable devices on prescription, diagnosis, and for Supermicro, um, we'll be sharing with us how to deploy 5G to implement telemedicine. Microsoft, on the other hand, will share with us the development and the progress of cloud for healthcare, whereas AT genomics and AI, um, they will be talking about AI and genome algorithms and computation by leveraging analytics, um, we are accelerating development of precision medicine. In Taiwan, as we all know, we have solid foundation of ICT industry, and we have premium high quality healthcare, and we have a very comprehensive and complete um, healthcare database. And this year, 2021, in the Economist Personalized Health Index, PHC Index, in Asia Pacific area, Taiwan is ranked number two. Um, only lagging behind Singapore, we are be we're doing better than Korea and Japan. In recent years, as we have seen, the ICT industries have been working cross, uh, working with um, other industries, and the leading ICT players in Taiwan have allocated resources in smart care. And we are seeing the five leading telecommunication companies. They are working with different provinces to provide um, telemedicine. The ICT industry, telecommunications, medical supply, and healthcare, their collaboration and cooperation are accelerated in this under this trend of big health. And they are forming a new ecosystem of big health. And I think this is a great opportunity for Taiwan to be promoted and elevate itself to become a pivot in telemedicine. You can say in the future it could be another TSMC, so to speak, in semiconductor, for example. There's a comparison. And between technology and ICT industries, of course, they have a lot of differences. They have different ideas. For example, in technology, they focus more on efficiency, and they need to and go to the market faster. They need to enter the end market as soon as possible, whereas in the healthcare area, the doctors, the professionals, they have to follow SOP very carefully. So the two industries, how are they going to break the restraints or limitations? How are they going to accelerate their collaboration? That is actually the topic for today. That is why we are hosting such forums for everyone. Forums like this, we want these forums to serve as platforms where discussions and thoughtful exchanges can happen so that we can have experts from different industries to join hand and accelerate and, and accelerate development. So I would like to um, share with you in Thai track what we have been doing in accelerating development of smart care. Actually, starting last year, um, we've been develop developing a lot of um, offering a lot of inbound and outbound events, um, integrating online and offline marketing campaigns. 
For example, this year um, we have a series of biomedicine forums and seminars, including the master classes, opening up the biomedicine in Taiwan. It's a small seminar, but we have distinguished guests such as Dr. Yang Pan Chi from um, Academia Sinica and also um, heavyweights in the industry, Dr. Wei Fu Quan. They join us to discuss the um, Internet, internationalization and global development of um, healthcare in the new age. Also, we have other forums such as the new value of smart medicine, the um, trends and application of 5G technology in telemedicine, and also regenerative Medicare in Taiwan, how to create another miracle. So with se seminars and events like this, we it's our hope that we can um, overcome the pain points for the medical industry and technology industry in collaborating um, with each other. And in TITRA, we are facilitating a anti-epidemic solutions ecosystem. We have a dedicated um, website for um, our international buyers to ask for quotes or place orders. And we have endless online campaigns and also only product launch and matching seminars. We want to create more opportunities for our um, companies in Taiwan. So um, we sincerely pledge your participation in all this um, matching and business events. Last but not least, right now, right here, at the first floor of this building, <laughs> in this um, exhibition center, um, starting yesterday, um, October 14th and all the way till 16th, we are having Medical Taiwan, this special exhibition. And it will be great if you can join me. You can visit the Big Health, uh, for example, uh, Big Health and Anti-Epidemic Solution Ecosystem and Medical Supply Chain. These are the three pillars. Um, of the exhibition. And the exhibition is available online for two weeks. So if you cannot join me today, it's totally OK and free that you can join us online. And last but not least, I would like to thank our speakers. Thank them for joining us in today's forum. They all have a very busy schedule. Thank them and thank you, everyone, for sharing with us the latest trends and latest discoveries. And I believe with the wonderful um, talk and presentation, it will be a very fruitful day. So I wish you great health and very wonderful, a uh, very great day. Thank you, Leonard. Um, today we are very happy to have Ms. Audrey Tang, Digital Minister of Taiwan, um, for opening remark. Since 2020, the um, COVID-19 has destroyed or actually changed the lifestyle for many people. And Audrey, Ms. Tang, has developed a lot of um, innovative application to accommodate the new lifestyle under the area. Ladies and gentlemen, good, good morning. I'm very honored to be here in this video and through this forum we through the cross field facilitation re evolution of smart healthcare we can see the ambition of titra and combining innovative and cross field momentum and through the strong industrial resources and network we can facilitate and accelerate and open up more diverse opportunities with new visions. If we look back to our past forums from digitalized medicine to electronics, medical records, or to real-time telehealth and telecare, to look at the in the age of IoT, what kind of interactions in medicine and other Healthcare can come up with new forms. And in the past two years, in the face of the epidemic, we have seen impact brought to global health industry. How do we use innovation and technology to solve the problems of medical staff shortage and also provide better health care? So how do we use the better force of cross-field facilitation 
to cross the boundaries and to come up with innovative ways to provide service models that are innovative and more fitting. Therefore, forums like today are very essential to look at from the angles of healthcare and medicine and from technology and innovation and to interact and exchange and group our collective wisdom to really create health care and medicine services that people will really feel. I would like to wish the form of great success, good health, live long and prosper. We would like to thank Audrey for greeting us with the video and we would like to use this opportunity to invite our guests on stage for a group photo. First of all, we would like to welcome back on the stage Lenore FM Lin, President and CEO of Titra on stage, David Cho, Founder and CEO of Deep Zero One. Danny Chen, CTO and MTC lead at Microsoft Taiwan. And Alan Chan, CEO and co founder at HE Genomics Incorporated. And also Jason Xu, Senior Account Manager, 3M Healthcare Business Group. We would like to welcome our guests on stage for a group photo. Please look to the front at the camera in the center. Today, we have really famous host, uh, companies and people that to join us. We would like you to raise your right hand, give your thumbs up, and we wish today's forum a great success. We would like to thank all of our participants on site and online joining us in the forum today. Thank you very much. We would like to uh, thank everyone with a round of applause. Thank you very much for joining us today. Please exit the stage from your left hand. Thank you. Next, we begin with our first talk today. 3M has always been famous for providing innovative solutions, meeting new demands for new healthcare in this changing world and providing better quality. Today, we have invited Del R. Lawson, Senior Technical Manager at 3M, to share with us through a pre-recorded video the technology transformation on diagnostics and testing with wearables and microfluidics. And at the end of this video, we will be uh, joined by Jason Xi, who will be providing a QA session. Feel free to scan the QR code on the right hand corner of the screen and present your questions on Slido. If you have any questions, feel free to bring them up on Slido and we will take them after this video. We will give you three more seconds to scan the QR code. We would like to welcome Dr. D. Uh, Del R. Lawson in his video. I work at 3M. I'm a senior manager in our medical solutions division, part of our medical device solutions group. It's a real pleasure to be here today, and I want to thank the Smart Medical Forum for inviting me to give this uh, this talk on uh, this talk on technology transformation and how it relates to diagnostics. We'll be walking through uh, a number of our technologies that we have for 3M, and um, I'll uh, I'll share with you some ways that we could partner together to uh, to provide better solutions for people in, into the future. I'm only sorry I can't be there with you in person, uh, obviously due to COVID and other considerations. So, uh, uh, but I hope you get a lot out of this presentation. Please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, you'll have my contact information at the end of this presentation. So really eager to learn more from you about your challenges and how we might be able to help. So with that, we'll get started. Uh, you know, uh, diagnostics um, uh, is, is a real challenge right now. And we're trying to do more with less in, in many cases. We want to get as much uh, measurement and uh, diagnostics as, as small a sample as we can. Uh, we know it's a challenge for people to draw blood and um, uh, 
uh, especially excess volumes of, of blood. So in many cases, as with glucose uh, test strips, we're trying to get critical bodily information from a small amount of sample. So doing that with a microfluidic device allows you to work with smaller volumes, and we'll be talking about that quite a bit today. And we wanna make sure whatever results we get, even though the, the sample is small, are accurate because decisions are being made around uh, food, exercise, other sorts of things that, that have long-term impact and short-term impact for our uh, customers who use these devices. So microfluidics is a big theme today that you'll hear about as, as we talk about this. Um, also, time to result. Um, I think as we've all lived with COVID over the last several years, we know that, um, yeah, it's been, been almost two years now. So um, we, we know that uh, in the early days of the pandemic and in other situations where people need critical information, um, point of care testing could be highly valuable if those results could come in minutes instead of days or weeks. And so uh, you'll hear things that will allow us to move away perhaps from central labs uh, to more point of care testing with some of these solutions, whether that's with a, um, an antigen test or perhaps even um, a lab on a chip or other devices that allow you to work with small samples at a location to get a, a fast result or make the results that are required in the lab also faster through higher throughput uh, sorts of solutions. So we'll talk about that today as well. But time to result is critical, and, and uh, I hope you learned something about that. So as the one theme for today is just, you know, we're, we're going to be talking about how we connect people, ideas, and technologies. And if you're working on a new medical device, one of the best ways to have a successful result, I would say, is to um, reach out to your partners early, whether that's the people who will be manufacturing, but also the material suppliers that you're gonna be working with because you don't wanna find out that you have a problem later in the process. So another theme throughout the talk today is gonna be reach out to your partner sooner rather than later. Uh, adhesive technology, a company like 3M, um, we've been around for um, more than 100 years. We've been working in healthcare related uh, businesses for 55 years. And so a lot of experience, uh, many of our core products that you're familiar with, scotch tape, uh, post-it notes, um, are adhesive related. And, and you'll see that uh, again as a technology platform throughout this presentation that we do a lot with adhesives. And um, there's kind of three pillars to, to taking those adhesives and making them into a useful uh, diagnostic device. Uh, you've got typically some sort of film uh, that builds the, the structure of the, of the, the device, um, uh, the overall structure of that device in terms of how rigid it is, and then an adhesive to hold all that together, and the microfluidics to allow, in particular with a glucose test strip that's shown in this picture, to get blood from the finger to where the uh, measurement system is, typically an electrode of some sort. So all of those things go into the mechanical properties of the system as you put it together. It's also really important to consider optical properties as well in a situation where you might be measuring a biological um, molecule via fluorescence. So you can't have a lot of fluorescence from your materials that you're using either. So the fluid has to move typically, it has to hold together, you can't have leaks, you may need air to bleed, and then you'll need, if you're measuring optically, all of those things to work together and not have a strong background. So there's a lot of considerations that go into these and we'll show you some of our solutions and hopefully things that we can partner on in the future. So, um, these are some of the design challenges when you're trying to work with small volumes of fluids. Um, I won't go into all of these, but just looking at the material properties, right? So, you know, uh, there's a lot of things that can go wrong with optics in terms of if your material has strong fluorescence background, um, you, you need uh, strong tolerances, you want these things to be as accurate as possible. Fluid volume oftentimes uh, relates directly to the accuracy of your results. So making sure the calipers, the stacks, all of the errors that, that propagate throughout kind of everything. When you say you want a film that's 10 microns or 20 microns or 30 microns, there's always a tolerance associated with that. So making sure that that stack up doesn't create errors that cause problems later. Compatibility, all of the layers that come together need to work together well. Some things don't work together well or as things heat up, over time, storage, stability over time, things may not work well together. So making sure 
you start early, you build prototypes, you do early stability studying is critical to make sure that the compatible, uh, the materials are compatible in that stack up of that device. And then ultimately, we can make one or two in a laboratory or maybe even more than that in a laboratory. These things all have to work together from a manufacturing perspective. So they have to, to come together, uh, be able to manufacture at the rate you want, with the yields you want, at the cost you want to have a viable product. So all those things go in to a process, which is why many of us have sort of a stage gate process that we use to launch a product. But getting started earlier, moving some of those big questions down earlier to make sure all the materials work together well sooner rather than later. So again, that's part of this partnering that we're recommending that you talk to companies like 3M early. In the case of 3M, one of the things that we have at our disposal is a large number of technology platforms. So you won't be able to read all of these necessarily, but we really do view this as a periodic table. And as a chemist, you know, uh, the periodic table was a foundational piece of our learning to become really good scientists because we would mix and match these molecules or these atoms to make molecules uh, that would make life better. Well, and it's the same thing here. We're mixing and matching these technologies from different sectors that we have within 3M to bring together and solve customer problems. And our business is a B2B business. We provide components to uh, those of you working on medical devices. We don't make medical devices uh, in my group. In particular, we provide components to you to make your better medical devices better. And we can draw up on these different uh, technologies. And I'll focus in on one particular area, which is around sort of our microfluidic space, which we've already been talking about, right? So we can draw on adhesives, biomaterials, films. Again, I won't go through all of these, but I'm going to highlight a couple. We're going to talk about surface modification, how we can make something hydrophilic so that materials flow, which you need oftentimes with some sort of a biological sample to get from the, the sample to the measurement area. So you need hydrophilicity in many cases, uh, which we'll talk about. And then microapplication, the ability to manage those volumes in such a way that they're accurate, uh, reproducible, and that from device to device, they're consistent. And then there's some other things in, in this list as well that we'll uh, probably highlight as well going forward. So um, let's talk about films. Hydrophilic films are kind of the foundational piece, particularly with glucose test strips. So in order to get blood from the, the finger stick to the, the electrode is a critical component. And that needs to work every time and it needs to work quickly so that people can get that valuable information to make decisions about uh, uh, lifestyle and life choices. Of, you know, food, when to eat, when not to eat, things like that. Fairly simply, we take uh, a, a film, usually polyester, and we coat something on it that has um, a hydrophilic uh, end that exposes itself and becomes sort of the, 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 the transportation uh, layer for that fluid to very quickly wet out and move uh, through capillary forces and other uh, forces to move to, the, to where you want it. And we have a variety of coatings that we can use, uh, surfactant-based or non-surfactant-based, to, to provide that solution in a number of configurations, thicknesses, uh, to, to get you to your device, which we'll talk about next. So when you stack up these films in the right format, you end up with a finished medical uh, testing device, in this case, a glucose test strip. So um, you've got all of these films that have to stack up together. You have various geometries to allow for the port for the blood to go in, transport to the electrode portion where the enzyme is that provides the glucose level measurement. And the volumes, the thicknesses, uh, make sure that the, the blood has the forces, the hydrophilicity is appropriate to move that blood, usually in, in less than a second, from the point of, of entry to the device to the test point. So uh, very important that this all work together well and 3M has solutions that we can talk about with you to make that uh, effective and uh, work every time. Um, uh, these are just a few of the kind of the, the cross section of different things that go into making uh, glucose test strips. It's, looks deceptively simple, but there's a lot of things that go into that. Double-coated films, single-coated films, things with masks, and surfactant-free options. So um, uh, we're eager, if you're in this business and want to talk to 3M about some of our solutions, we have a variety of, of choices to help make that more effective for you. And um, 
uh, look forward to talking to you about that if you're working in that space. So uh, let's talk at ad adhesives as well, uh, a critical part and a, a critical part of our experience of, of being in the medical area for, for like I say, almost 60 years uh, in this space. And some of these can be very complicated devices. When you start talking about uh, point of care devices that are more lab on a chip, you're not just normally transitioning from one spot to another like we do in a glucose test strip. There may be multiple activities that are required to go from the good stuff that's in the sample and removing some of the things that are interferences from that sample and getting to the zone where you need to make the, the measurement. And so bonding these materials together is critical and you can't have leaks. Um, and uh, if your sample comes in contact with these adhesives, they, they can't do any harm. So, um, and they have to hold together under perhaps stress. These, these materials may uh, age over time. They're, they're obviously transported. They may sit on the shelf for a while. There's a lot of considerations that go into that. So again, if you're working on one of these type devices, we encourage you to reach out to 3M or a similar type partner to work early on answering some of these questions because you don't wanna find out just before launch that you've created some sort of a material mismatch or an interference from the adhesive or some other factor that might cause you some complication. So reach out early. Again, we have a lot of experience here, eager to talk to you about this and these things these devices, uh, as you might expect over the last year and a half, have been incredibly um, important uh, as people have been working mostly on COVID-related activities, but just point of care in general is becoming more recognized as a useful tool and device. People can't always go to the doctor, um, uh, blood draws and things like that, especially in the, at the height of the pandemic. So point of care, these types of systems are becoming even more valuable. Uh, going forward. This is a fairly complicated slide, but it's a complicated process. So as you think about um, microfluidic solutions and the role of the adhesive, there's a lot that goes into putting these devices together from die cutting, cutting out the, the sections that need to be open for the material to flow, laminating these whole processes together. They need to be stable under storage and sometimes uh, on the ocean or uh, in parts of the world that are uh, hot during the summer, um, these things can have uh, excesses of temperature. So making sure all of these things work together. So again, we've, we have a series of adhesives that we would uh, work with you on and make sure that these meet all of your uh, criteria with the benefits shown on the right-hand side in terms of uh, fast grip, uh, aging to the, to the requirements that you have, et cetera. So uh, really uh, look forward to having that conversation with you if you're building one of these devices and wanna take advantage of some of these features. And a whole cross section of materials. Uh, we could spend a lot of time on this slide, but I won't. But just in general, know that uh, the choice of adhesive is really important. And uh, silicone is used in, in many cases for um, applications where this chemistry, which tends to be very inert, uh, does not interfere with things like PCR or enzymes that are used in certain sorts of tests. So silicone being somewhat benign, mostly benign, is a great choice for some things where the adhesive comes in intimate contact with the solution and you don't want any er in interference from that. When you're away from the sample and the sample doesn't come in contact with uh, the adhesive. Acrylics are oftentimes a much better choice for holding power, right? So uh, where you can't have leaks, where you can't have delamination, those sorts of things, acrylics are a fantastic choice uh, for holding the device together. But oftentimes if you're in contact with the chemistry, you would choose something in the silicone family. And we have uh, a variety of adhesives that offer the benefits of both of these, these chemistries going forward. So again, just wanted to show you that diversity of, of offerings. Um, lots of uh, examples of, of things that use microfluidics today. Um, I've already spent a fair amount of time talking about glucose test strips, deceptively simple, critical to people's lives, have to work every time. And um, we make billions, we, uh, our partners, make billions of these every year and are essential to people's life and they measure them right where they are uh, during their lives. So point of care uh, by definition. Um, nucleic acid tests and PCR, we're doing more and more of these sorts of tests that provide uh, these different layers, help with fluid flow, help hold the device together. And then microplates, uh, again, deceptively simple, but uh, allowing us to do high throughput, 
right? We can measure 90, uh, 94, you know, et cetera, at a time, 96 at a time, and then the multiples of that going out to 1,500 and plus uh, sorts of samples. So high throughput, getting those samples all put together, and then being able to walk across uh, to your device, you don't want to risk any cross-contamination. So our cover tapes that go over microplates are in incredibly valuable as well. Um, the chemistry and the adhesive offer some advantages of being able to be repositioned and then once positioned and tacked down very strong. If you were to drop this plate or tilt it in some way that the chemistry came in contact with the uh, adhesive, again, do no harm sorts of adhesive in terms of poisoning that reaction. You can have rest assured that you're gonna get a good result with that even if it comes in contact with the adhesive. So that range of solutions is available. And if you're interested in talking to us, please reach out. Um, Microreplication, we'll spend a few minutes on that. This is a, a developing uh, capability to help go from the traditional approach to making uh, a, a point of care microfluidic device to maybe uh, combining steps and ending up with a better, more cost-effective result. So uh, our microfluidic solutions, our microreplication technology is something that 3M has been doing for a number of years. Uh, it helps with light management um, and uh, fluid management, as you'll see, but it's the ability to create in roll good form. So a roll good, uh, much like you would expect, is you know a sheet of material. It helps reduce cost, increases consistency, and we can make many uh, high volume uh, of these sorts of features uh, to, to use uh, to, to your advantage. And so uh, small features, so we can make them very small, um, and we normally do sort of repeating segments uh, that we use for uh, applications all across the company from light management to traffic signs uh, uh, and now for healthcare as well. And you can see some of the pictures on the right. We can do things with optical, we can make holes, we can make uh, mechanical uh, sorts of things, and then we can make structures in such a way that fluid flow is, uh, is dynamic and, and capillary flow um, is, is easily managed. So um, this is kind of our, our vision. And uh, I talked about the process of laminating all of these structures together to make a tradu traditional glucose test strip. Um, you have to, to uh, create air bleed channels and you have to create the, the, the different structures that all come together. And again, with this propagation of error that happens with a few microns here and there in terms of specification, and then the next film, the next film, you can get stacks that, that create some variance in the volume that relate directly to the accuracy of the test. And as we know, regulatory bodies are asking for higher and higher accuracy. So our idea is to provide all of that or most of that solution in a simple uh, pre-cut uh, structure um, to allow you then to just laminate that to your electrode layer and all of the volume uh, creation elements are already there, including the air vent. And so uh, we'd really like to, to talk to customers, not just for glucose test strips, that would be a, a great place to start, but for other point of care diagnostics as well, where you're trying to manage fluid, fluid flow, and instead of these stacks up of, of materials and the waste and, and yield loss that come with a somewhat complicated process to uh, something where we can bond these together and create that fluid volume uh, in a much more accurate way and in a simpler uh, manufacturing process as well. So I'll highlight those advantages here. A single embossed heat bondable film, that's what we we're calling this. And uh, we expect to see in, in improved precision and accuracy from that, instead of the stack ups that occur, from the precise control of that volume. And uh, we can make complicated structures or very simple structures uh, in, in terms of uh, something that would apply directly to a glucose test strip example, or something where you may need to split flows and do more complicated processes where you move that fluid to multiple cha chambers and such. Um, the big advantage we believe is gonna be more accuracy and cost. I think most people really would count on that, but on the manufacturing side, um, you know, the not having to do the die cutting and some of the complicated lamination processes uh, would also be uh, a tremendous benefit to our customers. Let's move on to 
uh, uh, another area, and this is the optical area. Uh, so moving away from microreplication to light management. Optical technologies are very important in, uh, in some wearables, but in diagnostics in general. It's, it's, the, it's the signal that, that many of us uh, use for interpreting uh, any sort of biomarker or, or other test oftentimes is tied to light. We see it here in the, in the picture on the left with a, a pulse oximeter, but there are many other things we do in the laboratory that depend highly on uh, light, uh, light generation, fluorescence, and things like that. Th that technology has um, some um, potential to be improved on with some of the technologies that I'll highlight today. And we could spend a lot of time on this and, and I don't wanna get too bogged down, but just in general, there's optical sensing in health is really um, uh, foundational, but also still has challenges. You can see that list here and I won't go into all of these, but you can have ambient light. Um, you, you always want more accuracy, typically. Um, you know, uh, reducing test time uh, is critical as well. So there's a number of challenges here where we're trying to get as much signal out of a limited amount of signal and being able to do that better, uh, better wavelength discrimination, better background elimination, things like that could be critical. And we're just throwing that out there for people to be aware of. We have the film technologies that I talked about before applied to, to managing liquids. We have lots of film technology where we can manage light as well. So we can, we can manage wavelength, we can manage direction, and we can do things with polarization with some of our films that are really uh, astonishing, I would say. So, you know, working with a partner who's working on a, a, a cutting edge new device or even uh, traditional technologies where they would just like to get some extra amount of light or eliminate background material, background signals, or get more directional aspects to that light, we'd really like to talk to you about that. So, you know, given the theme of this talk and trying to transform diagnostics and transform, uh, find transformative technologies, we believe light management could really help us, whether it's wearables or other sorts of things, where we could take advantage of, of uh, some of this technology. I'll just finish up with, you know, if you're worried about accuracy, signal strength, power, form factors, you know, we can throw these tools at it that you see on the right to improve outcomes. So polarization, angle, wavelength, and adhesives to hold all that together. So uh, I've talked about sort of hydrophilic films and some of our capabilities there. We've talked about adhesives. We talked about microreplication, and I just wanted to finish up with this idea that we can manage light in unique ways that could offer better outcomes, better signals, uh, potentially, and we're eager to talk to people about that technology. So I'll finish up with this. Just again, think about you know designing a device, and if you're living this world, you know these questions are out there already, right? What are the assay and chemistry requirements? Do you have upstream material processing needs or specific material formats that, that allow for the best production? And you can see all those other questions. My best advice is please approach your partner early. You'll get a better outcome that way. And uh, we look forward to having those conversations. I'll finish up with this part here, which is really, you know, if, if 3M's the right kind of company for you, we really would like to hear from you. We love having conversations, especially at the early stages with partners. We also don't mind those calls at the 11th hour where you've maybe had some tough outcomes and you need a quick fix. So, you know, early is great. We can solve the problem together. Coming in later isn't as much fun, but trying to get you back on track uh, with some material solutions that we, we can provide are great as well. But uh, start early if you can. If not, please remember to call us and we'll try and help as best, as best we can. This is how to reach me. Um, this is my information. You can reach me at my email address or via LinkedIn or via Twitter. Um, not as active on Twitter, um, uh, but particularly LinkedIn and email are fantastic ways to reach out. If you need information on 3M, uh, we have some fantastic white papers and things you can find at the 3M.com site there, Science of Medical Diagnostics, and also findmymaterial.com is a great place to get started to get you some samples. You can speak with a live person, there's contact information there, but if you just need some samples, there's a nice way to, to do that with findmymaterial.com. So. With that, I'll sign off and uh, thank you for the invitation. I hope you found this useful. 
So next, let's um, welcome Jason Xu, Senior Account Manager from 3M Healthcare Business Group. Um, this is a QA session. Let's welcome Jason. Thank you for your participation. As we all know, the leading role of smart care is really human beings. In 3M, it is our hope that we can bridge the bonding among people and all kinds of different uh, uh, and all kinds of platforms. So we would like to provide more services. Um, whether you are from a startup or you personally have um, better ideas, um, we are willing to provide the bonding in our platforms. And thank you for the sharing. That's my colleague, um, Dale Lawson. And I sincerely welcome you. If you have any questions, feel free to rave. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. So, Mr. Xu, actually, we have heard from Slido. We have some questions already. So, um, what is the next for glucose test strips? So, actually, smart care, in essence, we want to leverage 5G technology, AI, to develop uh, new opportunities aside from traditional medicine. And as we all know, in the glucose test strips in this industry, I think um, people are more afraid of the invasiveness because most of the strips devices are invasive and it's not really for everyone. And I believe for the next generation of glucose test strips, the way we monitor glucose level in the blood, I think the biggest pain point will be how to reduce the invasiveness or to at least make it more comfortable, less intrusive, so that all the users or the patients who need such monitoring will be happy and easy to use it. And of course, there will be a lot of wearable technologies, less intrusive, test strips will be available in the market. And I believe um, a lot of companies, uh, manufacturers are already involved in um, this development. In Taiwan, from my understanding, from our understanding, we are seeing new trends of such development of, new, of next generation glucose test strips. The next question is, um, can you speak to changes that impacted the testing market due to the global pandemic? Um, this is a big question. From my understanding, personally, I can answer this question. Um, first of all, the old model of healthcare service, especially in testing, most of the testings are centralized. I mean, the structure is centralized. It's like you draw your, you have your blood drawn in a hospital. You have to visit a site, and everything is stored there. So it's centralized. But gradually, I believe. We will see new developments such as you can do this blood test at home. You don't have to um, draw your blood by yourself necessarily, but you will have more choices. For example, you can go to the uh, neighboring clinic. Um, you can have similar um, testing or monitoring services in a closer site near you. And you can meet the demand of telemedicine um, under proper conditions. For example, in your own room or maybe next to your bed, you can complete these tests and you can um, upload the data, send it over to your doctor, and then you can receive the diagnosis from your doctor. These are things that we couldn't do, but thanks to the latest development of technology, we are able to provide services like this now. Our next question. So in 3M, um, how do you integrate the enzyme technology in your bond and maintain the active level of the enzyme? Well, as you all know, 3M, we are the best taste tape maker in the world. 
In Taiwan, in the test strips area, um, we are providing a lot of products so that um, our clients like, can leverage different technology in their use scenario. What we are doing now, we are dedicated to, for example, hydrolipic film. Um, that's one of our developing area. And we are developing um, adhesives at intensive bond um, with um, precision, with precisive technology so that we can stabilize the enzyme and it stay active. Let me put it this way, the enzyme is really a key role for this um, intensive bond. Without this enzyme, we wouldn't be able to know, for example, the glucose level um, in the blood. So with these two technologies, if we can integrate them, um, we will like, I mean, with these two technologies, it will, we are going to enhance and lengthen the active level of the enzyme. So due to time constraints, we will, come, we will finish the QA session now. Our next speaker is from Supermicro. And we will have um, Jeff Sharp on the topic of empowering edge computing and connecting AI to healthcare operation. Now, let's welcome Marie Lin, General Manager, IoT Embedded and Edge Computing Supermicro from Fruitful Micro, and also Mr. Jeff Sharp, Director, IoT 5G Edge Embedded Solutions Supermicro. They'll be sharing the presentation via the video. Let's welcome them. Thank you. Hi. My name is Hi. Jeff Sharp. My name is Jeff and Sharp. I'm honored to be part and of the 2021, the 2021 Smart International Forum. Smart Medical that's Forum today. that's happening uh, today. Both Maury Lin and myself, uh, both Maury Lin and myself uh, will be uh, talking a lot about empowering the edge, empowering the how edge, edge and cloud how edge and together. cloud work and together. It's and primarily it's focused around primarily connecting, focused not, around just connecting not just that edge to cloud, but how that relates to artificial intelligence or AI-based computing uh, for both healthcare operations, um, looking at analytics for patient care, uh, looking at analytics and using AI to, to help resolve some of the world health crises that we see today. Um, and in today's session, we're going to primarily focus on a lot of that infrastructure that makes up this AI-based environment, uh, smart clinics, um, telemedicine, uh, using more intelligent devices at the edge, and how they all work together um, to, to be able to deliver, you know, really a good, great quality of experience for the patient and also ease of use for the doctors and the staffs. And most importantly uh, uh, as well is having the ability to increase the recovery time and extending life of, of our patients. So starting off with just some terminology, um, cloud computing, you all know, you know, everyone talks about cloud computing and having it uh, somewhere in the cloud, as they say, and it could be geographically close or most instances, it's geographically pretty far away. Um, and the cloud or the big data center uh, uh, hardware and software that's running in those data centers, it's running analytics. It's taking a lot of the data globally from patient care and knowledge that's being gathered and put into a, a cloud type of environment. And I'm using that data to do what's called training, uh, artificial intelligence training, both from a machine learning perspective and also for analytical perspectives as well. And that's really for a broad range of applications, tons and tons of applications. And that's done usually in a remote location. However, with edge computing, it's really closer to where I, I need that compute instance because of low latency or that responsiveness of, of an action and a response. Some cases it needs to be in the microseconds, some cases in the milliseconds. And also at the edge is really where I do most of my what's called inferencing. Inferencing is a technique for our artificial intelligence is, is basically what we do with our brain is we look at something and we act based on that, 
on that action, whether my eyes uh, really look at a device, look at a screen, and within that screen it's telling me something and I'm going to act on that. And, and the artificial intelligence world, inferencing is the same way. I've been trained on what I'm looking at, and based on that training I'm going to do something. But most of that's being done at the edge. And from the benefits of Edge AI, it's, it's triaging, providing support to our patients, really in a real-time uh, effect. So if you look at an imaging machine, the results of that imaging machine is, is very quick and concise and real-time uh, uh, sitting in front of that technician or the doctor or even the surgeon that's in uh, during surgery. Um, and other key attribute is in this edge to cloud mentality, we have specific regulations within the industry like HIPAA. We got to make sure it's secure, uh, both at the local uh, site and also in the remote site and everything in between because I'm processing, I'm doing more inferencing at the edge, so I want to be able to make sure it's private and it's secure. And the other key pieces is bringing that intelligent closer to the source, the patients, the hospital, the providers, uh, the insurance industries, diagnostics equipment, actually embedded within uh, even a smart thermometer having the ability to do intelligence within that. Um, and from a super micro perspective, if you think of uh, the physical locations of where this is being put in, and of course, in very sterile environments and you know, with air conditioning and heating and cooling and humidity control, very, very uh, specific to comfort, that plays in a game in the cloud, right? So you see these racks of hardware that's running compute mechanisms and it's very um, environmentally friendly to that hardware. But in some cases, it may not. It may be in someone's house, dusty. Uh, you know, it could be high humidity, moisture, it could be even outside. You know, there's possibilities where the compute gear is in an outside perspective. And then within hospitals, it could be in a back room system, it could be in a closet, it could actually be in the room itself, it could be in the equipment where the fans themselves may not have the ability to dissipate or dissipate that heat or bring in cooling. So having those type of equipment, whether it's a fanless product or a high-end, uh, heavily rugged-based product uh, versus a very environmentally friendly product. And the key to that is really the, the real-time attributes, telemedicine, in the clinic, in the hospital, maybe in the local data center or in the cloud. If you think of, let's say, real-time or less than 10 milliseconds using, let's say, an augmented reality glasses, if I have to rely on the cloud for that input and then the response, it could be 12 to, let's say, 20 milliseconds or even higher, maybe up to 50 milliseconds. My brain and my vision is not going to process that correctly. I may get vertigo, I may get seasick, and we don't want that experience. So really that real-time attribute, especially during surgery, think of autonomous cars. If I need to stop in instantaneously, I don't want to wait for the cloud to tell me to stop because those few milliseconds can create a, a, a crash. Same thing in the medical and healthcare industry. We, we really want more real-time attributes. Um, and with that said, if you think of a device, edge, and cloud infrastructure, they all have to work seamlessly. So you may have a device. That device could be anything. It could be a, 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 a temperature gauge. It could be a device that's analyzing a, a picture, an x-ray, an MRI. It could be a million different things, but that device may or may not be very intelligent. Um, so that device is going to connect at the edge to more of an intelligent device or a gateway or a compute mechanism that's maybe kind of doing some inferencing, doing some real-time thinking and, and uh, advanced intelligent technologies to give me an instant answer. Um, some instances may go all the way to a local data center, maybe within the hospital or the clinic, or in sometimes it's going to go all the way to a remote cloud-based data center, whether it's private, public, or a little bit of both, to do analytics, to do data modeling, to just store that data for future AI or vision and analytics perspective. All of these have to work very seamlessly and very fast. Uh, so with that said, the, the results of that is, is primarily just improving the outcomes of our healthcare industry. 
your data gathering, your data, your, your gathering all of that information and doing something with it. Primarily analytics, being able to do research, be able to to improve the patient's recovery time and, and even their life cycle as well, using the massive amount of data that can be stored within that, that data center and then driven back to the edge. We're learning at the edge, just like we do with our individual brain. We're here, we're doing it just like I'm speaking right now and looking at the slides, looking at the information. I'm processing that all real time, just like our, our more sophisticated hardware is doing and software systems there in the clinics. Uh, we can do more workforce planning, we can do cost analytics, we can improve our ROI, we can transform uh, our digital devices to more AI function, you know, handheld devices. We can look at fraud detection and improve and trigger uh, where there could be fraud that's, that's, that's happening. And just overall technology, technology is never going to really stop, so we have to be in front of that technology to continue on um, improving the not just the hardware capabilities, but all those analytical and software capabilities as well. Um, from a supermicro perspective, uh, you may have never heard of supermicro. Um, we are one of the top five leading hardware companies in the world. We manufacture um, uh, platforms and systems that go from that edge to cloud. Uh, in the cloud, it could be these, these large AI training systems, um, and all the way to the edge, it could be something as small as a, a, a board that fits into an ultrasound box or an MRI, or even in telemedicine at the, uh, the patient's home. And everything in between, you know, we have so many different types of uh, hardware capabilities based on the environmental conditions that it's going into. And a lot of these are really based on the optimized systems, how big, how much powerful they are, all the way to workloads, because we're trying to put more and more um, what I would call use cases or workloads in individual systems as we can, again, to use that common building block or common platform mentality. Why have 50 types of systems or racks and racks of compute gear that are doing you know, different functions where I can combine all those functions both at the edge and also in the cloud as well. Um, one key element is, is I can't be more, uh, uh, how should I say, more instructive that it takes a village to make all this happen. And from a super micro perspective, uh, we realize an ecosystem of software partners Software infrastructure management uh, partners along with SIs are so important to the success of the rollout of these sophisticated next generation systems. Uh, we also have great partners with Intel and NVIDIA and other silicon providers that we're working together on our architecture and how they fit into that architecture and really based on the environmental conditions that they may be in. So you have software, or what we call ISVs. Those are the applications running. SaaS is a good example in this one, where they're doing uh, analytics, world you know, leader in analytics for not just healthcare, but other market verticals as well. NetApp, enabling the edge to cloud management resources and storage resources and enabling SaaS and all the different applications that are going to be running at the edge and in the cloud. And of course, a company like Cambridge Consultants that are providing system integration, a lot of putting these things together, maybe building a brand new product or bringing us the use cases of, of, of the next generation of, a, uh, of an ICU room with all the equipment that's in there and building it all together. So again, it takes a village to do this. And really, when we kicked off this whole transformation of healthcare, with not just these uh, partners, but others, we wanted we didn't want to what's called boil the ocean, but we definitely wanted to see our priorities. So we looked at RPM, remote patient monitoring, enabling the ability to, to, to see and use a person, whether they're at home or in a faraway clinic somewhere or a, a faraway building, that we can use AI and computer vision to be able to, to monitor that patient. Um, also, the big one is around ICU bed optimization and asset management. 
um, with the onslaught of COVID over the past uh, two years, having the ability to uh, real-time monitor and optimize our assets, uh, even down to something that as simple as a thermometer, uh, we can put into place using AI. Uh, other things like contact tracing, and contact tracing is, is looking at infectious diseases and linking all of the analysis that we're doing, not just uh, in-house, but also remotely, and maybe outside. There could be a, a concert event. Can I use uh, in-house uh, contact tracing with that event to see how that infectious disease can then move from uh, person to person to person uh, to prevent that in the future? Uh, hospital staff productivity, of course, we all know there's spikes within um, when things happen. We need more hospital staff. So can we actually optimize and uh, and through business continuity planning, can we be able to uh, forecast and look at, okay, if there's an emergency or there's a disaster, uh, how do we look at staff and use the optimization of that staff and bring more staff in? Uh, improve patient outlook, how do we actually manage those patients going forward? And how do we use all this data to be able to uh, improve the rehabilitation and, and solve diseases, uh, things like Parkinson's, uh, arthritis, you know, heart problems, those type of things. So AI is becoming a more integral part of uh, not just you know, looking at something and doing something about it, but using these common platforms to do more and more within one system. One of our, our really good partners, we have Intel, we also are utilizing NVIDIA as well from a hardware acceleration. And from an operations perspective, this is what um, Maury's going to talk a lot more about. And at a high level, you know, looking at operating room uh, coordination, surgical quality, telemonitoring, sitting, uh, telehealth, capacity management, all of these things combine both needing edge compute hardware and also doing analytics in the in the cloud are all required. Uh, you know, great example is is uh, clinic coordination. Uh, you know, you may have different campuses, a large campus or remote campuses or remote clinics and how they coordinate together. Even something that is simple as parking lot optimization, knowing a patient coming in for surgery or a, a patient that doesn't know where to go in this monster complex. You know, I'm here in North Carolina, Duke University, humongous uh, campus environment. So with all that said, you know, putting all this stuff together is, is critical to uh, common platforms. Um, to kind of wrap it up, just a, a quick synopsis before I hand this over to Maury is, Number one, the momentum is growing for this next generation of, of processing power, using AI, using healthcare um, as, a, as a market vertical that we're heavily focused into, uh, both for the edge and um, in the cloud. The power of, of AI, the power of this environment um, enabling you know, the future of, of intelligence and computing is critical. So AI inferencing, training, uh, is improving our operations, our diagnostics and the recovery. And the key thing is, is, is overall quality of experience of our patients and the environment, uh, the ease of use. Um, from a super micro perspective, again, it takes a village. We recognize it takes a village. Uh, so having a great ecosystem of partners and and others, we, we can actually deliver a, a, a a, a big solution. And, uh, and with that, uh, the future is here with Supermicro and our partners. And um, thank you for your time for this first part. And now I want to hand over to Maury, who's going to really kind of go in depth um, with a lot of use cases and things that we're, we're working on today. Again, thank you so much. And uh, Maury, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, it's a, my honor to be here to present. My name is Maury Lin, the General Manager for IoT and Edge Computing in Supermicro. Supermicro is very glad to be invited to join this International Medical Forum. And after the presentations from Jeff, then 
My journey is to bring you to understand a little about the challenge we observed from the market, especially for the smart health care. We recognize the medical data uh, create lots of challenge to the users and also the managers who need to protect those data. Medical data have a very high security privacy requirement because uh, it's related to the information uh, able to decide your symptoms and also make the doctor uh, able to provide the medicine to your symptom. So medical data, it's very important. Then the second part, the mobile apps also make the patient or the people need a medical service has a higher expectation to have a fast response. In the past, you might use uh, lots of the paperwork to run all the process and then uh, need to wait a longer time. Because of the mobile apps, you can get lots of lab test results or the advice from the medical service team right away. And this also changed the patient's relationship to the medical service provider, fast response. Connected devices. Well, you can recognize there are lots of the computing device around the hospital or clinics because the people provide you the medical service will require lots of the IT level support to access the patient information right away. And also to make the operation technology easier to handling the operation inside a hospital, including the appointment arrangement and checking the online result. And also lots of the tasks can be run on the mobile device. It's just about the device around the patient and the medical service provider. There's also bigger and critical equipment help you to do the symptom analysis. For example, like the MRI machine or the X-ray machines. Those big machines also did lots of work for doctor to find out the root cause. However, those uh, computing uh, powers provide for the medical imaging solution allow the doctor has a faster chance to get into the root cause and provide a, a device or treatment to the patient in a good time manner. Because of this, there's also another part, the research and development center involved. Uh, most of you are aware of uh, lots of the new medicine required to solve the problem, especially lots of the new uh, disease and also the challenge, for example, like the COVID-19. Many R&D centers for the medical innovations, they require lots of the computing and also the GPU to help the research team find a cure as fast as they could. Because of this, there are lots of the demand asking for the computing performance to those research centers. We recognize this challenge to the smart healthcare industry. So we have a four angles to contribute. The virtualization is a kind of a technology very popular in the IT world. And this virtualization also bring the huge values to the smart healthcare, including processing the data and also handling the applications. The second part here, the AI and GPU for inferencing. Most of you are aware of the machine learning, deep learning, those kind of a computing power require lots of the data and also to train the machine inside data center through the cloud architectures, which is the cloud computing. Once they have the data able to figure out the patterns, they will become uh, applications that using the AI inferencing to faster to detect the disease. And also to make those X-ray check results can be easily detected by computer, not just uh, through the doctor's uh, analysis. Last one, the edge computing also played an important role here. When we talk about edge computing, it's not just a device on your hands around you. Actually, what's the network inside the infrastructures you cannot notice 
For example, like、uh, when you want to have a secure network environment, edge computing devices will provide a software-defined networking, allow those users use the service in a safe network. Not just about that, it's also offering the data aggregation point, allow the IT managers inside a hospital to check quickly, make sure the hackers will not attack the network. Those are edge computing efforts could be done by the devices outside of the data center. So we have、uh, many solutions to this topic. For sure, I have、uh, some slide to talk about the case for you. Because we recognize this, there are several angles we want to share with you how Supermicro bring the values to the smart healthcare topics. We have lots of innovations, the high density AI computing machines through lots of the high end GPU, and also the big data make the AI machine learning, deep learning, and high performance、uh, computing workloads、uh, higher demand from the healthcare service provider. Because they want the answer faster to go back to、uh, solve the problems, the medical imaging solution also provide radiology and diagnostic accuracy faster and much more efficient. And I will share with you some cases we、uh, help the industry. Cloud gateway systems. It's also a very important step because we are able to use the cloud architectures to provide a hardware a monitoring. Allow the hardware equipment provider in the hospital monitor their critical medical machines, for example, like the MR machine, and those machines are very critical because it requires lots of the service behind. So using a cloud gateway, working with those equipments can predict the service time and also to reduce the cost, the false alarm from the systems. So it will provide lots of the values to the equipment provider to serve the IT managers or the hospital owners faster with a, a lower cost. We bring in one operation technology topic here.、Uh, I believe that lots of the roles inside this environment in the hospital could be the worker, and also could be the IT managers, and also there's the service managers inside this environment. And there are lots of the challenge recently because of the COVID. So, for example, like the social distancing tracking, and also how to make sure the cleaning and also disinfecting those kind of things. It's hard for you just track without the computer visioning. And also the data, if that could be centralized, it's also easy for the managers to trace back and find alert. And also able to make those IoT data become more value, faster response to the service. So the speed will save all lives, and that's why this is really matters how to make this service possible through the mobile apps you are using right now, and also the service how to help those people work in the hospital、uh, in a more productive and safe way. We are very glad working with the several cloud native application providers, SaaS, and also with the Zadida. They are the companies able to make this application running、uh, hardware agnostic inside these architectures. It allow the application easily onboarded, doesn't matter through the public cloud or private cloud, and plus the AI inferencing and data insight. It can utilize the hardware provided by Supermicro and to offering the service. Like I mentioned to you, the cameras watching the environments able to detect the trace、uh, those people walked, and also to detect the mask is on the face or not, and also the temperature data from the sensor to detect those data. They will be recorded and then、uh, put into the edge computing devices. And with the dashboard information to offering the alert and also the the suggestions to figure out how to optimize the float inside hospital, we also have the customers get the benefit from Supermicro's edge computing device. In front of you here, one of the customer that using the、uh, mobile X-ray machines.、Um, because of this,、uh, mobile X-ray machines require the computing device closer to this equipment need to be fanless. No noise, 
that means there's no fan inside, very quiet. And power saving, and with enough graphic performance to run the applications for this mobile X-ray station. And because it's a battery based, it's also required a DC power source, just like your laptop to power on the gateway device. So this tiny gateway device, and not just fanless, also can survive in the wider operating temperature. So that means it can easily hiding inside these uh, cabinets. And because of this, it's easily allowed these machines to uh, move to the different places with a battery-based solution. And remember, in the COVID timings, the X-ray result will also help the doctor do the symptom checking. So this customers uh, use our hardware in a very smart way to power their computing at the age. We also have another partner called Wicca. And the Wicca, they are the company provide the very fast storage solutions for AI, machine learning, and deep learning. And this distribu distributed storage solutions are offering the, the fattest uh, options, which is like the NVMe type. Imagine this solution will be much faster than the storage device you are using right now. But why they need such a fast applications running on top of that? Because uh, at this moment right now, the cloud inside the public and the private cloud will require lots of the connections check. And also they want the file sharing could be easily and faster distributed to the applications they want. So they can seamlessly connect it together to make this possible and reduce the latency as well. And there are lots of applications that we're running between the devices to access the raw data and also get the result to continue the application. And make this possible, we can Supermicro offer together as a solutions for you to do the uh, faster analysis on your data. And it's not just for the patient and the doctor, it's actually also help the research center to quickly run those uh, analysis on the simulations. So this is uh, one of the way we help the world. And then with the computing technology and also the storage solution from our partner to help the research centers for the medical innovations. Lastly, I believe all of you are aware of, uh, we mentioned about lots of the supercomputer. And to the research and development center, they require the very fast response about the simulations they are doing. Because of this, a supermicro able to put lots of the GPU together. And this GPU allow in a very short time frame to get the result out of the study and to continue the analysis. So in front of you here, the machine is a 4U recommend device, able to plug in a GPU. This GPU will provide huge computing solutions. And what they are doing inside, uh, in front of you, you can see this uh, press release in the United States. It's called the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California. And inside this uh, national lab, they're using the supercomputers to help them find a solution and this solution allowed them to find the structures and function of the virus against the COVID challenge. And this is a non-stop task. And there are lots of the progress they have to push through. Because of this, Supermicro offered the total IT solutions all integrated together. And because we also the headquarters based in the California here, we can deliver very fast response to what they need and work together to help the world. And we are very proud of this project and also feel very honored to have a chance to share with all of you here. And if you have the more ideas you want to explore together, please feel free to contact us. Supermicro is very glad to be invited to this international medical forums. Looking forward to have a chance to see you in Taiwan and also welcome you to visit us soon in the United States. Thank you. Thank you, Maury and Jeff, for the wonderful presentations. Next, we would like to welcome D David Cho, founder and CEO of Deep Zero One. With Deep Zero One, they are the first to be certified by USFDA and also awarded many 
recognitions using AI analytics to diagnose, diagnose images faster and you taking advantage of that golden time period. Now we give the floor to David. In AI or and smart medicine, Taiwan can actually make the world-class products, and Deep Zero One is a very good example. Hello, everyone. I am David Cho. I am the founder and CEO of Deep Zero One. Our name is Deep Zero One in English. And uh, next, I would like to share with you how deep learning is applied to producing some of the world-class products at Deep Zero One. You can see this slide is fully packed, but let's focus on the word certification. In 2019, Deep Zero One was certified by USFDA. We were the first deep learning product to be certified by USFDA in Asia-Pacific. We were a very new company back then with only seven employees, and we were certified by USFDA. In our industry, the mega company is GE from the United States, General Electronics with a 100-year history, founded by Edison. And one of the senior managements of this company said to us that they find us a miracle because there are so many amazing companies and teams in Asia Pacific region from Japan, Singapore, and Korea, but never did he imagine that it we would be from Taiwan and from from Taiwan and a small company with only seven employees to be first certified by USFDA in the Asia-Pacific region, and it was beyond his imagination. In the next slide, I would like to share with you how we were able to become a world-leading AI system. There are so many areas in smart medicine. What we focused on was the AI triage system on brain CT. The most of these information and the triage comes from emergency medicine and mostly from stroke patients. Every year, there are 15 million people suffering from stroke, and the second would be traumatic brain injury from accidents and so on. Every year, 69 million people suffer from traumatic brain injury. And stroke and TBI rank top two in, uh, rank top two in the top 10 deaths around the world. So all of these cases are emergency cases. And we produced an AI software and we had competitors who wrote similar products and our product can produce within 30 seconds a detection with 95% accuracy. The detections include brain bleed and other abnormalities and that was how we became the world-class and world-leading system. The reason we were able to achieve this was because we have some of the best professionals and experts around the world. I worked with one of, I work with one of my high school classmates. My classmate went into medicine and I went into electrical engineering and further into computer science. In terms of smart and medicine and software, we have some of the best talents around the world. If we were able to bring together these talents, we can make some of the best products, and we are a very good example. So exactly how 
are we leading? Compared to our overseas competitors, in detection for brain bleed, they detect whether or not there is brain bleed. But in addition to that, we detect the volume and the type of the bleeding and also the zones of the bleeding. Sometimes it's in the brain, sometimes it's in the cerebellum, sometimes it's in the cistern, and it would be it would lead to different complications. And we are more precise in our detection. And in, in addition to brain bleed, we also detect other analysis, for example, the midline shift. So, for example, we have the left and right cerebrum, and if you are wounded in one part, you would have a bigger pressure on that part. And midline shift would be a very important index for surgeries to decide whether or not to open the brain. And also, other critical analysis, we also detect them for. But in the interest of time, I won't go through all of them. Our product has always been also been verified by National Taiwan University Hospital and hospitals in the U.S., which shows that our accuracy is consistent throughout Taiwan and U.S. hospitals and compatible with different CT scanner brands, whether it's Siemens, Canon, or GE, or Philips. We all have very consistent accuracy rates. And in addition to FDA certification from the US and Taiwan, we were also certified by ISO 13485 and CE marked, and also Thailand FDA and Hong Kong FDA certification. So we have very comprehensive and complete FDA certifications. This is our US FDA certification. This is certification from Taiwan FDA. And next, I would like to share with you in further detail the pain points that our product solves for our clients and how we win over our competitors. In terms of brain CT imaging, it comes in large numbers. It takes up about 40% of all the CT imagings. And also, they are urgent cases. They come from these emergency units in the hospitals or come from stroke and TBI patients. So these two types of patients they lead to a very high number of paralysis or death. And in these medical centers, they have a lot of patients. By the time you finish with imaging, the doctor may not be able to get to them in the uh, right away to look at the imaging. But our product is a machine. It's an algorithm. So right after the imaging, takes place, the software can run its algorithm to see if any alerts needs to be made. So our system issues these alerts. And when in the event of in the event of stroke, you would lose 1.9 million brain cells per every second. So this helps an immediate detection helps to lower paralysis and death. And another meaningful, another um, significant meaning behind this product is that it helps the society. And our main value to these regional and local hospitals is because these hospitals lack specialists, specialist doctors, for example, surgery surgeons or emergency doctors or these x-ray specialists, they are especially lacking in these regional and hospi local hospitals. So we provide these 
And for different specialists, they have different accuracy rates. And also, the accuracy rate varies with seniority. And if you are new to this job or if you have a lot of experience, you have different accuracy rates. And because the lack of specialists, this is very difficult for them. But our AI algorithm provides them with 95% of accuracy, providing the doctors with as accurate and consistent second opinion so that they will make less mistakes. So for big hospitals, for the medical centers, we have different targets. Actually, we provide different values if, com if compared to the small and medium size, for example, community clinics. I think the biggest value in smart medicine or smart healthcare is that we can provide better care to these remote areas where the uh, medical resources are lacking. In Taiwan, we have more than 15 hospitals. They are using our solutions, including medical centers and regional hospitals. And more than 25,000 cases are assessed with our solutions. And in Japan, Southeastern Asia, in the Middle East area, we have established exclusive distribution agreements. And starting 2022, we will launch our overseas campaign. Last but not least, um, this is more wordy, but um, I would like to share with you I have asked around my friends in the medical field. I asked them if you have a medical appliance, um, if it's made in, e in Europe or the United States, whereas the other appliance made in Taiwan, what would be their first impression? And they always say if it's made in EU or US, then they think it's of higher quality. However, recently, I heard from a Taiwanese doctor who has used local products, and he compared the precision rate of these medical appliances. And he told me, actually, those made in Taiwan medical appliances, the precision rate is much higher than those made in Europe and the United States. So this is good news to me. I feel thrilled and very happy. In ICT Medicare and in smart healthcare, yes, in Taiwan, we can make world-leading products. And Deep Zero One in my company, I think this is really one good example, even though we have stereotypes that people would think, OK, made in EU is better, made in US is better. But um, here in Deep Zero One, we would like to change this concept. Just like here, we have heard from a lot of um, private sectors and public authority that Taiwan we have great in Taiwan we have great potentials to deliver smart care in a better way. So by this note, I conclude my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Thank you for your wonderful sharing. Our next speaker is CTO and MTC lead from Microsoft Taiwan, Danny Chen, and his topic is starting a new chapter in industry with cloud for healthcare and leveraging its advantage in IT infrastructure and also cloud computing. Microsoft has accelerated the progress in telemedicine, and let's welcome Mr. Danny Chen starting a new chapter in the industry she was cloud for healthcare. Uh, Distinguished guest online and offline, good morning. So to start my presentation, before I really start, I have three questions for you. These are the questions that I'm very often asked by my clients. The first question is, what is the impact of COVID-19 on the medical system overall? Second question, when it comes to digital transformation in the medical industry, what are the challenges? Number three, in the medical industry, in the healthcare industry, do we need a public cloud? So is 
cloud computing worth our trust? How are you going to leverage this technology? What are our pain points? So with these three questions, I think um, in my presentation coming along, we will be discussing the details. In Microsoft, it is our belief that our products are to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. And we believe that in the medical industry, we believe that with technology, we can empower the medical professionals in every unit. They can do more and achieve more. In healthcare industry, if we look into the pain points of digital transformation, in the past, we looked at the aging dem demography and also the shortage of medical professionals. And at the same time, we see the cost are rising, profit margin are going down. However, after COVID-19, we also see in the past, in medical industry, most of the time, technology is just nice to have. However, after COVID-19, People in medical industry, they think and they agree that technology is a must. So with these four trends and these insights, we can discover that when it comes to virtual health, in a survey recently done after COVID-19, we found out that many people, they would opt for telemedicine and they wouldn't want to visit the hospital if they have the choice. And more than 79.5% of patients, they are using virtual care post-quarantine. And 73% of physicians would like to continue using it for chronic health appointments after COVID-19. So after the pandemic, um, they prefer to leverage their medicine to treat, for example, chronic diseases patients. And secondly, if you look at interoperability, in the hospital, if you look at the data, 90% of providers' data is unstructured. When we are making decisions, especially data-based decisions, how are we going to get this data from different systems? How are we going to integrate this unstructured data? That's really a big challenge. And the third perspective is that according to a survey done last year in the United States, we found out that 7.1 billion US dollars is lost due to data breaches by hackers. And this is a issue that a lot of medical um, industry stakeholders are worrying about. Last but not least, health insights, up to 70 percent 70% of the time, providers spend looking for insights, and it's wasted on data ingestion and inification. It could be the data are from different systems, so they are in different formats. So these are the challenges we are facing. So how can we best leverage the data we have in medical institutes? If you look at the patient's journey, the first step is that they will provide patient information. However, when it comes to the clinical scenario, we look at other care team data. And at this stage, still, integration is the problem. Just not long ago, um, we looked into the health system of a hospital, and his system is indeed the core for a hospital. His is connecting to more than 90 external systems, and it serves as a pivot, the core, for data operation. However, for his, that's more than most of the his systems, they are more than 20 years old, actually more than 10 years old. And actually, there are new sources of data. So how are we going to connect this data? How are we going to integrate this data into one? So the biggest problem in medical industry is not about the shortage of data. It's about the lack of integration of this data. So how are we going to overcome these challenges? 
Usually, we need a holistic approach to system integration optimization. It's not that okay, you have headache, so you take a medicine for headache. No, it's like you're building.、Um, Wheels on a house, building walls on the wheels. So you need to have a comprehensive, holistic approach. Otherwise, you can only、uh, you are not going to see the forest. You only see the trees. So actually, Microsoft, we have done surveys around the world. We see these priorities in most hospitals. First of all, they want to provide better. Quality of care, and of course, they prioritize safety of the patients. Safety is really the most critical value that we can provide to the patients to help patients to help keep patients safe through improved communication and collaboration. However, the problem is whether the data at back office is integrated so that an experienced physician can see the right data at the right time so that he can improve the quality of care for the whole medical system, the healthcare system. Of course, it takes time and cost. Resources to drive down the time or the resources wasted、um, in assessing the data. So these are the、um, three issues. I mean,、um, the three challenges we see、uh, we see in empowering the organizations. And in Microsoft,、um, we also offer some solutions. These are our recommendations. We have a product called Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare with an aim to provide something that people can really believe and to integrate and compile all of their data, and it's cloud-based. We mainly focus on three items. Main first of all, it enhances patient engagement. How do you provide on this platform some services to patients for the hospitals to really enhance this patient engagement and deliver this page patient care? And provide better experiences to patients. And second, this platform provides medical staff a platform to empower them with team collaboration. And also on this platform, we provide them the opportunity to improve clinical and operational insights, and also help the doctors to make decisions. And most importantly, as we asked everyone at the very beginning, do people trust these cloud-based products? What about data security? So when we first started building Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare, our ultimate goal is to protect this health, a、uh, protect health information (PHI). This is something that's at the core of this product. So if we take this concept and expand it, you'll see that at the core is data. So when we talked about digital transformation, we know the main challenge is. Data security. If you have a platform that provides very good integration and compilation of data, and providing medical staff and doctors a very good、um, data platform to help them make decisions, that is very important. And as I mentioned, that is the main direction of. Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare, and this is the conceptual architecture. Mainly, our four main services, including the add-on, aim, the Power Platform, the 365, and the Dynamics 365. These are mainly an Azure to solve the problems, including data and interoperability. So, here we. Need to highlight the fact that we provide the the core service for file transfers, and at the bottom, at the baseline, we provide a common bot mo common model for these data. So we take everything from his or data from other places, and we can integrate them on this platform for. A better access for these users, and of course, compliance, security, are still the same. And in terms of fire, this is something 
that the medical industry has been focused on. How do you connect the old H07 and marching into the data exchange standards that's required for the 21st century? So if we can imagine fire becomes the hub for the hospital and it can connect to different um, sources of data, including electronic medical history, or, for example, it can be connected to mobile phones or tablets, and it will become the, a, the core of development for the next three to five years, hoping to solve the problems of um, data access and exchange in the hospitals. And Microsoft provides two offerings to meet your needs. First of all, it's open source with your own full secure, full control, and it's on the plat wind cloud for you to use. And we talked about cloud for healthcare, but we are actually building a platform on at Microsoft, and we need different partners, whether it's Deep Zero One or the AT Genomics. They are all very good potential partners that can work with us. We provide different applications to them for them to apply to their the services that they are going to provide in the hospitals, and also because it's cloud-based. So it's not just for local clients. We can also bring this service to our clients around the world. And to share in more detail, first of all, we talked about enhancing patient engagement with this cloud for health. So this provide them a with better care and better environment and improving their health. We understand that in the event of COVID-19, the patients expect not only personalized care, but they also expect a certain degree of patient insights. For example, doctors can look at this patient's condition through a six 360 degree view, including the past drugs they've been taking and the past treatments they have e experienced. And also it's a virtual health service providing patients with better experiences. Now, one case example, you might have heard of the company Nuance. This company took Microsoft about one 19 billion to 20 billion in procurement and uh, to in acquirement. You know, iPhone Siri uses the core, the, the core technology of Siri on iPhone is from Nuance. And in the entire medical industry in the United States has a very high market share with very high applications. So I'm going to share with you a short clip to show you how this system can help in telemedicine using AI and remote services to help doctors to go forward with pro, um, diagnosis. Captures and contextualizes physician patient conversations, automatically creating clinical documentation for virtual visits, all within Microsoft Teams. This video shows Nuance DAX integrated into a Microsoft Teams virtual visit between Lucas and his doctor, Dr. Fernandez. The healthcare clinic scheduled an appointment for Lucas and Dr. Fernandez through Microsoft Teams and the Microsoft Bookings app. Lucas received an invite with a link to their virtual visit in Microsoft Teams. The patient joins the visit from their email and is admitted to the lobby. Meanwhile, Dr. Fernandez gets ready for the visit and has her calendar side by side with her chat. When she joins the visit, she sees that Lucas is waiting and admits him into the meeting. When the visit starts, Nuance Dax sends Dr. Fernandez a message. This separate conversation with Dax enables her to start, pause, and resume the recording. When the recording starts, a banner appears to alert the patient that the visit is being recorded. Have you had this happen before? 
During the visit, audio for DAX is securely captured through Microsoft Teams. The entire conversation is recorded and diarized with high accuracy, so nothing is missed, lost, or forgotten. After the visit ends, artificial intelligence automatically converts the conversation into a standardized, structured clinical note that goes through a brief quality review process to check for accuracy, omissions, and appropriateness before being delivered for signature directly into the electronic health record. Nuance DAX for Microsoft Teams promotes a better telehealth workflow experience for both patients and providers by powering virtual visits with clinical documentation that writes itself. So you can see that Nuance solution coupled with Microsoft Teams and used on this platform. You can see that through a video chat and it can be transcribed. And also with this speech analysis, it can also be transcribed into this electronic health record for further documentation. And it's not shown in the clip, but also it allows some automated suggestions for following the doctor's prescription, for example, the kind of prescriptions that's required or other actions that needs to be taken, and it can all be integrated. So that was to enhance patient engagement and also to improve patient experience. And the next part is empowering health team collaboration so that the medical staff can communicate better and more smoothly and be more integrated in their communications. So, and even in some of the patient care can, for example, through the um, blood oxygen gauge, it can, they can better monitor the patients and optimize patient treatments. So this is another clip to another clip to show you. This is a case at San case. Appointment in, in the books. In the books, it was incredibly stressful. The biggest issue facing doctors today is information overload. We have too many things coming to us at too many times. So we need information to be quick, ready, easily accessible. As the chief medical information officer, we look for ways to bring innovative technology to patient care. Microsoft has helped driven the digital transformation for St. Luke's. Microsoft 365 has been a game changer for us. It has helped us get things done much, much faster and more efficiently. We feel more comfortable with the cloud because we're able to reduce the complexity of the security stack. Microsoft Teams gives us the ability to easily communicate I can have the information right through Microsoft Teams. I can directly chat at a provider or launch a Microsoft Teams call to get in touch with my supervisor. I lost my dad to cancer. I also lost my mom. I was 30 years old and diagnosed. I just remember thinking, wow, I have to go through this again for myself now. I was so surprised with St. Luke's. Every time I came for an appointment, they knew who I was they communicated with each other. As a patient, the last thing that you want to worry about is if your doctors are in lockstep with each other. St. Luke's was huge in making a stressful situation less stressful. Microsoft has taken the world we used to live in and given us a whole new world. Microsoft is giving us one place for all of our information. I got in healthcare to make a difference. It's why I chose to be a nurse. The rewarding aspect is bringing technology to better patient care. Microsoft allows St. Luke's to deliver the best care possible. So at St. Luke's, in addition to the clips that the clip that was pre-COVID-19, most importantly, it would. It facilitates communication within the hospital. So in the past, you have his or other customized systems. 
But how do you communicate between one another? Is it through email or through meetings? But with teams, it allows them to communicate better when they need to talk to one another or to digitize any of their meeting notes. And in during COVID-19, this platform really uh, brought its effect, effect to helping lowering the uh, lower the death rates and also lower the average stays in the hospital and helps everyone to be in sync and on the same page at, the, at all times. And now, finally, regarding the operational insights, how do we assist the entire hospital and the medical system to come up with a better decision? And that involves the access and exchange of these data, the analysis of these data clinically and in meetings and operational. We also have another short clip to share with you. We know that COVID-19 is catas catastrophe to human health. We find people who are aged with comorbidity, they die quickly after COVID-19. But some young people without, younger people without comorbidity, they also face a respiratory failure and die. So it probably has to do with their um, sensitive genes. So we look at the different genes and we come up this with the risk score and we proposed it to UK Biobank for research. During the experiment, we can do a lot of um, plugging for computing, but these computing can take a very long time. For example, for one genome, it can take uh, two months. Now, Microsoft has AI for Health that can really assist our research. AI for Health is a part of the AI for Good global program. Azure high-speed computing program can really help these medical facilities to solve the, the problems with AI. So far, AI has sponsored over 180 organizations around the world. When we first started taking up this project from National Taiwan University, it says if we thought that if we can provide them the computing power, we can solve their problems. But all of the APIs are required. So we work with Intel and bring in the health team from a Intel to really apply their resources. And we moved from we increased the efficiency from 3 to 5 percent to up to 70 to 80 percent. So we filled in all the gaps, and it only took us four weeks to fill in all the gaps. If we used our local computer, we would have used two years to complete the work we have done in four weeks. So Microsoft is really honored to have worked on the COVID-19 gene research with National Taiwan University. This is like the largest research in Asia. We hope to bring this a case example to other Asia-Pacific countries. And I hope that through these genetic analysis, it can really help future medicine. People can prevent their diseases and not going to the hospitals just simply after they come suffer from diseases. And in addition to COVID-19, other chronic diseases, including hypertension and diabetes, can also be very aptly pre prevented. This can be applied to not only the medical industry, but also techni technology industry. And we can create a better future for human health in the future. So um, I would like to emphasize here that um, in certain scenarios, indeed, you have to use com cloud computing to massively and very quickly analyze the data so that we can solve the problems 
in predictive medicine, medicine. and for genetic um, algorithms and computing, uh, my colleague, uh, I think today's speaker, <laughs> Alan, he will be um, speaking to you. And like I said, we how about when it comes to the trust of cloud computing, how do we solve the um, security concerns? And for Microsoft, indeed, um, cybersecurity is part of our core, and we have dedicated one billion U.S. dollars for cloud safety. So number one is um, purity. How, uh, second is compliance, because in different regions they have different compliance standards. How are we going to follow up and fulfill the legal requirements and compliance um, requirements in different countries? Whether it's GDPR in e in Europe, um, which protects privacy for the user, and we have to offer accommodating solutions. And on Azure platform, we have more than 90 solutions available for governments, and we have more than 90 um, compliance certifications available for different users. And here, as you can see on the screen, whether it's ISO, that's a traditional certification, or HIPAA, high trust in the United States, all these certifications are available in our cloud platform. So this is our commitment to cloud security, and indeed, it's a huge investment. So remember, in the very beginning, I asked you three questions. Number one is the impact of COVID-19. Did it accelerate the digital transformation in the industry? What were the directions of digital transformation? And second question was about telemedicine. And actually, among our clients in Taiwan, some of them discovered that the telemedicine system has to be connected, integrated with the his system from registration, our patient check, and also payment for drugs, etc. All these processes need to be connected. So can the platform support all these features? That's part of a concern of our client in telemedicine. And how do you provide the um, connecting technology, for example, you have POT, the POT technology, the um, chatting robot. Um, you can, if you can have such filter services, meaning you can identify the right resources to the right users so that before they register, they know where to go. And then we can improve the quality of care. And also we see two major challenges in digital transformation. One thing is interoperability, and the other is platform. So like I said, so we have a fire protocol in Azure platform, and at the bottom level of the data, we provide data models. We have a dedicated platform for our clients, and number three, when it comes to security and compliance, we have a lot of certificates that you can feel rest assured. And last but not least, I would like to share with you our um, partner ecosystem. It takes a village, not just Microsoft, to deliver these services. So we have a lot of partners that develop all these solutions with us. Today, I think my emphasis is really to share with you and highlight Cloud for Healthcare in Microsoft. Following up, we will be working with more partners for more um, projects. For example, um, Alan from AT Genomics, um, he will be sharing um, his collaboration with us. Here on this slide, um, if you're interested in this um, topic, um, please feel free to visit the website. And Microsoft for Healthcare will be, avail will be available by the end of the year. So it will be available online. You can click the link. And also, we have a Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare. Here, you will see news, announcement, news announcements, etc. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Danny, for the wonderful sharing. Our next speaker, 
is the end but on the least. Speaker of the morning session, Mr. Alan Zhang, CEO and co-founder of AT Genomics. His topic is Biomed IT, Evolution Empowers Genetic Testing Industry Chain. How to bring, uh, how to amend the gaps between technology and also product development. So his topic is biomed IT evolution empowers genetic testing industry chain. Let's welcome Alan. Um, thank you, our moderator and also sponsors. It's my great honor to be here to share with you. Thank you for your time. So today, our topic is the trends we observed in the industry, in the academic circle, and also in the private part, uh, in the private industry, uh, private sectors. So, when it comes to IT, how do we connect the dots to accommodate to the future development trends? I think we have wonderful speakers talking about really important issues from interest from infrastructure, hardware, sensor, and the data generated, and also cloud computing. We have Deep Zero One. Um, these are wonderful speeches. And indeed, if you look at from an infrastructure perspective, all these are essential components in precision medicine. But for health providers, what they need, they really need quick and good solution. They look at speed and efficiency. But at deployment level, it's really of high technology, it's really advanced. So how can we have a high level collaboration so that when it comes to the end user of the doctors, for them it's really easy access and comfortable use. So that's a huge gap there. As you can see, little by little, our technology is developing. And for patients, the commitment, the promises are not yet implemented. So that's what I call gap. And that's the implementation of technology. AD Genomics um, is a cloud-native enterprise biomed IT platform. We want to empower, empower clinical laboratory industry to build and scale their own precision medicine operations so that they can quickly build the tests analysis they need for precision medicine. Also, we can boost the competitiveness of the whole industry. We are the partner of key stakeholders in the industry, including Microsoft. And thank you, Danny, for mentioning us in your presentation. And also, we are working with eight, um, uh, National Taipei Medical College. We are working with local um, hospitals, and also um, we were TTA top ten um, medical startups. And before we really talk about precision medicine, so this is um, this is by um, Joshua J C Danny uh, Francis Collin. So. Um, Mr. Collins um, is about to retire, but earlier this year they um, published a article that discusses the transformation of healthcare. So here are some key points. If we look at precision medicine in seven perspectives, how are we going to boost the dynamism, how are we going to continue the transformation and deliver even better health care in the coming 10 years by 2030, that we can fulfill the commitment for everyone, for every patient. Today, I would like to look at routine or regular genomics. Actually, clinical genomics is being adopted 
very often in the market. And we need more and more biodiversity data. In other words, big data. How are we going to collaborate and make this data well used? And of course, that will lead to the problem of computing power of big data. And like Microsoft and also Deep Zero One, they have mentioned the um, development of algorithm that will be the key. And at the last stage, um, in integration, how can we um, include more stakeholders to build a better ecosystem? And also, we have to um, take into e-history of um, the digital history of patients. And for example, we need to capture the data from IoT. It should be included. And of course, we cannot forget, we cannot compromise in privacy and cybersecurity. Last but not least, return of value that is very important. As technologies evolve, the data comes from patients, in other words, every one of us. And with this development of new technologies, how can we really translate the value, for example, a clinical testing, with, how can we translate and share the value with the patients? So this is the trend that we are spotting around the world. So this is my pledge to the stakeholders and also um, governments around the world, really, for how, how how to share the value or the return of this data. I mean, this is not really about technology. For genes, it's like a manual for human body. And if you look at genomics, the computing and also the related technology, we can refer to Moore's law. And actually, we are twice or even four times faster. I mean, if compared to Moore's law, genotyping is developing much faster. So for example, how can we um, deliver vaccines for COVID-19 um, in such a short period of time? And I believe many of you are already vaccinated and really is the advancement and progress of genotyping. That's why we can have MRI-based or um, protein um, vaccines in such a short period of time. Time. And 10 years ago, um, as we are seeing more and more genetic um, technology development, um, if you want to have one complete genotyping, it takes 1 million US dollars. But now it's you only have to spend 600 US dollars. And then you can have a complete genotyping. This is really amazing. Less than 600 um, US dollars, less than 1,000 US dollars, then you can decode your own genes. Of course, it requires um, experts um, like Deep Zero One and AD Genomics um, so that they can interpret the data, they can offer genetic consulting. consulting. However, in the future, we can expect that a genome, a full genotyping, actually we can spend less than 100 US dollars, meaning less than 3,000 NT dollars, then you can decode fully your own genes. By that time, it means that precise medicine and at core of the personalized email, uh, medicine will really be fully developed. And another trend around the world is when we talk about big data, exactly what does it entail? Governments around the world have been investing heavily in both in funding and talents in collecting data of various populations, these cohort data, these real big data. And altogether, it will surpass one million genomes. For example, all of us program in the U US, the NIH program, 
they would like to become the biggest, largest database with the biggest variety, including gene, genetic and other health data. What problem are they trying to solve? When we are doing medical research or medical developments, data is a must, it's essential, and we need to collect them, we need to analyze them, but our medical researchers or our scientific researchers are spending time on not researching the data, but building the database, how to integrate the data. If we can use some advanced technology like cloud computing and AI algorithm to really integrate and compile and clean up these data, then the researchers can focus on their research. So the All of Us program is focused on collecting the different data to build a diverse health database that everyone can access, and it does not focus on a certain population or a certain disease. Now, UK Biobank was mentioned earlier on. It's one of the largest biobank database in the world. And it has, it is acce accessible to a lot of researchers and clinical experiments. We saw that the project at N National Taiwan University is the in Interpolitan is also the interpolation project is also drawing information and data from Biobank. Now, they have started database very earlier on, and so far they have reached a hundred at the NHS has so far completed 100,000 genome projects and committed to sequencing furthermore 500,000 whole genomes by 2023 to 2024. Now, including Norway and UK are working on this European project to helping build at least the 1 million genomes, which is the One Plus MG initiative initiated by EU, and this would be accessible to medical researchers and scientific researchers. And Australia aspires to reach by 2030 to build a database, and they are invest looking to invest 500 million in this database to solve some of the rare diseases and cancer issues. The Taiwan government has also been investing in building a platform for big data. And I look forward to the fact that with developments in technology, these various partners can really integrate their database and work together so that we can further promote developments in healthcare. Genomics in healthcare is um, GA4GH is a healthcare genomic project and looks at some of the interoperability and communication of data. And it also estimates the rates for further by 2025, how much of this genomic information and data will be, uh, how much genotyping will be completed by 2025. And their estimation is that by 2025, about eight, 83 million people's cancer plus matched normal genome sequences for cancer will be completed. So if you imagine for one person, it would take about 200 G gigabytes, but for 83 million people, can you imagine the amount of data? And also for rare diseases, they estimate that by 2025, they will be able to complete 47.5 million genome sequenced for rare diseases. 
And which means by 2025, we're looking to process all of this data. And it can be very challenging for lab laboratories and hospitals. And it can become very competitive in the market because there, there can be so many solutions and so many projects that we can test. And if you are collecting these hundreds of millions of data, there are so many opportunities to discover. So re according to research and markets, as mentioned earlier this morning, the global precision mar medicine market is looking to grow at a CAGR of 9.8% and looking to grow to 20, to 125.67 billion by 2026. It's not just about genes or genotyping, but also some peripheral devices and algorithm and computing all of these data. And most importantly is the laboratory developed tests, the, LT, uh, the LDTs. It's fundamental and essential to bring precision medicine into a new era. And again, the sub-era genotyping is, sub-generation genotyping is key because this will really bring individuals and patients the fulfillment of precision medicine. The majority would be NIPT tests and also for common cancer or rare cancer, but basic cancer monitoring, the diagnosis, the tests, and even the prognosis and tracking it will require genes to tell us how do we proceed from here onwards. And also for rare diseases or genetic disease is also bringing a lot, accumulating a very large cost burden. So sub-generation genotyping can really bring precision medicine to a new era. And Taiwan, in this year, we have finally passed the regulation for LDTs. And this regulation will help the bio indus biotech industries in Taiwan to connect with international standards, including the eligibility for LDTs, including gene testing or clinical testing, it can be uh, operated cross fields. And with collaboration, they will be able to provide the best patient care. And we, they will require people for to specialize in the test developing and analysis and adjustment and the bioinformation processes and the eligibility is not limited because this person needs to know everything and dabble in everything. And a talent like this or the the talent that's required for future markets would be very important. Like I said in the beginning, we have very good model, we have very good cloud and algorithm and hardware infrastructure. How do we collaborate with Synergy so that we can make products that are really working fast and efficient and good in hospitals. Now, how difficult is um, genetic analysis? I would like to use an example that can be understood by a layman. In the fact, in the future, it would be multi-omics. We're not looking at a certain disease. We're looking at this whole person and this person can present DNA data, RNA data, 
um, methylation and radiomics and even uh, epigenics. It will show us all of these data put together, it will show us what kind of diseases is likely to present in this person. And we keep talk about we keep talking about machine learning, but in fact, our ultimate end user, which is the hospital, they need an integrated system, a final solution. This was a paper presented by Google, and it says that machine learning takes a very small fraction of the real-world machine learning system. You need to think about configuration, data collection, and data verification, management, process analysis tools, and monitoring and serving infrastructure. How do you juggle them? So, we see a lot of challenges for clinical LDT service production. Now, data set integration is something that has been mentioned over again by um, Mr. Chen from Microsoft Taiwan. It's not just one company that can do this. If you have the power and the momentum to really do this, we can work together and also for regulatory compliance, whether it's the CBIABT or LDT regulations, you need to look and also lo lower the cost, the overall service distribution. If you can move from centralized to decentralized so that all of your technology can benefit patients around the world, it's more beneficial. So at AG, AT Genomics, we empower clinical labs to build their own precision medicine operation. They come up with their own workflows, their own processes to ultimately input your connection, input connection to accelerate your workload and to reach scalability and to know when the computing is going to run. As Microsoft Taiwan mentioned GDP, the data that we have, sometimes data can only be analyzed in Europe or um, GDP. Due to GDPR, your data can only be processed in certain areas, but open scale and open source is very important in future developments. For example, WDL, the workflow description language, specifies data processing workflows. We know the future is in the cloud. How do we quickly reach that goal so that our medical staff can very quickly access the latest computing skills? And also, I would like to mention, um, as we are working with Microsoft, I would like to share with you the history, our journey. And actually, um, we were the Microsoft Accelerator Taipei first batch, 2019. And we became the gold Microsoft Microsoft partner that's um, IP call sale ready and CSP. And we are now discussing possible collaboration in technology that's um, in Microsoft commercial market space. As we see around the world, in National Institutes of Health in UK and also Biobank um, in UK, they are moving to the cloud. And Microsoft is their top choice as technology partner. In digital transformation of biomedical IT, in the past, um, what we do is that we provide a solution. But in the future, we will offer tools in the platform, some high-level tools that we can help these medical professionals to build the product they want, they need. So this is a no-code, low-code landscape. And thanks to such development in biomedical fields, um, that means we need higher level of automation because doctors are too busy.
they have little time dealing with IT. So system integration will become a form of service. Like I said, the open source services need to be integrated in open source. That carries the key component of future development. We need collaboration to accelerate the development of the products and tools we need, and also what the patients need. So the project management and also the management of resources of this um, open source are very important. Even though open source is free, you need maintenance. You need um, problem solving. And for this compliance, um, for this slide, compliance, privacy, and cybersecurity, I will just stay short. So overall, in the process orchestration, how can we fulfill the different needs at different clinical scenarios, they integrate different components? And actually, in AT genotics, genomics, um, we have a optimized solution. We look at the cybersecurity, usability, and scalability at clinical level. And we can ensure everything is up to the demand of quality, security, and precision. I know I'm running over time, so I'll be quick. All these are technology components are from the collaborative community. Without the alignment in the community on collaboration, for example, access to the data or analysis of the data, I mean, we need an alignment first, and then we can make sure the results can be shared in the community, including the patients. So global alliance is for genomics health. Um, this is a alliance that look into the industrial protocols and technology policies and they and they provide toolkits for genomic data regulatory and ethics data security toolkit etc so that um, different stakeholders in the industry in the academic circle etc can better work together in precision medicine, there's no such thing as one size fit all. Each sector needs collaboration, and the integration of value chain is very important. And it's our honor that AT Genomics is selected partner for Microsoft, um, CD Genomics, um, Eurogene House, and many other uh, great companies. And like I said in the very beginning, our mission is to support the medical professionals in hospitals to build the products they need with no code or low code and faster and better. So now let's join hands and improve the development. And also, um, we can aspire to a better future in this um, biomedical industry. Thank you very much for your sharing. And once again, thank you for your participation in 2021 International Smart Medical Forum Cross Field Facilitation Revolution of Smart Healthcare. By this note, we conclude morning session. And please feel free to scan the QR code on the screen. And after you fill, if you fill in the questionnaire, we will send you a copy of um, digital management of the magazine. And in the afternoon, we have wonderful session that's experts, investors, and entrepreneurs forum. So please come back um, by 1.30 if you want to join us. Thank you very much. See you in the afternoon. <laughs>